Welcome everybody to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett. And on today's episode, we have the amazing, the funny, the hilarious Marley Jacks joining us. Marley is an expert when it comes to video marketing, YouTube marketing, she is an absolute gun. So if you've ever wanted to know how to grow a business using video, if you wanna know how to grow a YouTube channel, she is the absolute best when it comes to that. She just come off stage at Funnel Hacking Live with some tremendous entrepreneurs over there as well. So if you wanna find out about that, this is the episode for you and of course if you want to grow using marketing online you know you can hit us up over at www.mogulcall m-o-g-u-l mogulcall.com for all your marketing needs but let's not delay let's jump into the show Marley, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Really appreciate you being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Of course, anytime. Now, I always like to kick these podcasts off with the question, which is, Marley, if I met you at a party and I walked up and I was like, hey, Marley, what do you do? What's your go-to answer for someone that comes up to you? Oh, well, most of the time I feel like I try to keep it interesting. So I'm like, I make people famous on YouTube. And then have to go into, yes, we work with influencers and thought leaders and position them through omnipresent video content, not just YouTube, but we, we work with video marketers. Yeah. I love that. That's a pretty solid answer, right? And it's definitely going to pique someone's curiosity. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. So uh, obviously you've been speaking, you've been speaking, you've been talking for a while and I know you've been on some recently on some pretty cool stages where you've been talking about this sort of stuff. Yeah. What made you get into video marketing because obviously now it's something where a lot of people are talking about it but you like how long have you been doing this for now how many years have you been in the video space yeah about three three going on four years i started in 2016. Mm. so what like of all the areas of marketing and things like that you could get into why did you kind of settle on video what was that process like well it was kind of an accident i was doing social media i was a social media manager and i wanted to get out there more and get more clients so that i could leave my nine to five because it was something i was doing kind of on the side And I started making videos for myself to get visible and to just get my name out there. And some of these videos really started to take off. So I was like, how do I do that again and again and again? And then I started to to think, well, can I do this also for my clients that I'm doing social media for already? Can I create video content? And that's how I created like what we're doing now with our video scaling system and teaching people how to use video to get their name out there, to build their movement, to scale their audience and ROI through video. Hmm. And so I've got many questions on this and I'm, I'm a big advocate of video too, but I want to uh, try and see if I can pull some out that some of the audience have. What's your approach if someone's like, I get that video is important and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get you to do a little, a few humble brags and a little bit talk about some cool people that you worked with. But like if someone's like, oh, I, I'm just not really that, I'm not a video person. I don't like looking at myself. I don't like the sound of my voice but I know that video is important. What's your kind of approach for people going like, how do, they, how do you help them overcome that if that's something that regularly pops up for people? Yeah, and it is like, I, I don't wanna be on video or I'm afraid of the camera or I just, I'm not comfortable with it. The biggest thing that I always say is like, if you say you're afraid of the camera, let's just be real, you're not. It's a piece of metal and plastic. It's, you're afraid of judgment, you're afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone, so let's just call it for what it is. But let's also recognize that you might say that you're not like a video person, but your audience is. Your audience is consuming video content at a higher, faster rate than ever. And if you don't get on video, you will get left behind. Your competitors will take over. Your competitors will gain that market share that should be yours. Mm. That's so true and so important, I think, for people to remember. And what's I mean, arguably there's not gonna be one that's best, but when you get people to do video, where are you distributing that content? Does it go literally, cause you talk about the om- like an omni-channel and omnipresence approach. Does it literally just grow everywhere? Like where, what's, the, what's the kind of platforms that you recommend for most people when they're distributing their content? So we like to start with the foundation of YouTube, but then repurpose it for all the other social media platforms. But the benefit of YouTube, and I talk about it all the time, is that it's a search engine, not just a social media platform. So when you have a question, you have a a problem that you need solved, often we go to our moms, but we more often go to Google. And so we type in our question into the Google machine and sometimes a video will come up because Google owns YouTube. And so Google is the largest search engine in the world. YouTube is the second largest. And so if people can be Googling 
and find your videos all day, every day. So when I say that I started doing videos in 2016, it was one of those videos that took off and to this day gets 14,000 views a month, just completely organically. I haven't touched that video ever since I made it and it's getting organic views, thousands, getting people opting into my email list, which there I nurture them towards joining my Facebook group, following on other social media platforms, joining my courses, getting on a strategy call with us. Like tons of people are telling me that they find me just organically through finding my videos. And then you can repurpose that for your Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, which is also going to, because YouTube or because all these other platforms value video content, it shows up in the timeline more than other pieces of content. However, the difference between these other social media platforms and YouTube is that this content on YouTube can be found even years later. On Facebook, Instagram, it does drown out in the algorithm and you'll have to repost more frequently. Yeah, awesome. And, th and that's a big point that you just mentioned there on that reposting part. So, because a lot of people, I think sometimes they go, I did my video on YouTube, then they share their YouTube link onto all these platforms. But that's not what you're saying, right? You're talking about taking that and potentially even chopping it up into small bite-sized chunks for people and then posting that natively on those individual platforms as well, right? Yeah, so we'll take like, say it's a five minute video, how many 30 or 60 second little clips can you grab from that? And then make it as standalone pieces of content. And then at the end of that, you can go have a little end screen for like five seconds saying, watch the full video on YouTube and you can direct traffic to your YouTube channel. Mm. And so with that, and obviously you said you started in 2016 and obviously that's still kind of, I would say that's, I would say late in the world of YouTube and YouTube influencers and stuff like that and people going on there. If people are now hearing that in 2020, and then they're going to go, oh, maybe like Marley caught a little bit of a wave and, you know, she she got in earlier than me four years ago. What's the still the ability for you to grow? Because I think sometimes people get, and look, I'll put my hand up at myself and say it because we did, we've done like 18 months of YouTube content and I still like, and uh, not that I'll say that we suck, maybe we do. You and I, you, you've seen our stuff before and, and kind of what it's like, but it's, uh, we still haven't found those ones that broke through and is, is it always a case that it's like, it's you eventually you will find it, right? You're only one piece of content away from, uh, yes. from breaking it through, right? So what, what's, what's the process like for your, like how do you manage the expectation of people when they go, cool, I wanna go on YouTube and you know, I'm not getting 14,000 views a month, Marley, on my, on my videos and all these opt-ins. Like how, how do you manage that for people and what sort of expectation do you set around YouTube? Yeah, and it's, it's a formula. Like you wanna be creating content that has search volume that people are actually looking for this content. But that said, I mean, search volume changes. We don't, we can't guarantee that everyone's going to be looking for whatever videos you're creating, even that like it, but the fact that you can rank for content means that your videos can have longevity, that it's not drowning out in the algorithm, even if it's slower. And the thing with YouTube is that YouTube is a platform that requires commitment. Really anything that you want to do doesn't happen overnight. And because YouTube requires commitment, it's the long game. But here's the thing, I started making videos in 2016, and even though I might not have tons of views and subscribers, those videos are generating leads for me every day. So what's more important? Because I can't, last time I checked, can't uh, submit my views and subscribers into the ATM, but earning those, uh, those opt-ins on my email list can translate into cash. Yeah. And so is that the metric you look for with your clients? It's like, cool, yes, we, yes, it's video, so we want, views and ultimately subscribers are great, but what's like, how many leads are we generating through? Is that, is that kind of the number one metric you guys look for or what's the yeah. measurement we see, stick for you guys? We want to see leads. We also want to see watch time because of you, what does that even mean? Did they watch for three seconds or did they watch for 30 minutes? Hmm. How much impact are you actually making? And people can buy views and buy subscribers, but I want to actually see that your content is making an impact and seeing the engagement and seeing the opt-ins. Yeah, awesome. I love that. And what what is, because I think sometimes as well, let's say you do a 10 minute piece of content. That's what we've previously been doing. And we you know, we, we, I think we do like one to two, two a week and uh, up until recently, just because we got slammed with a few things. But if you have a video, let's say it's 10 minutes or even maybe five minutes as well. What is a good view time? Because I think sometimes people go, oh, if someone didn't watch like 100% of my video, it sucked. But generally speaking, like there's there's some pretty like industry standards which might shock a few people i think what, what what do you guys measure as a good view time yeah 30 to 40 percent is what you want to aim for obviously more than that is amazing that means you really have the retention on your video but youtube is qualifying a good video at like 30 to 40 percent 
you to, for, for you to want a hundred percent, like we don't, even you don't watch like, like ask yourself if you actually watch a hundred percent of every single video, including the credits, including that, like, you don't, you really don't. So as much as like, I would love to get 80, 90%, the, the good measurement is 30 to 40. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, and what about when you take videos to across on, on Facebook and Instagram is, is your goals when you go across there? Cause obviously your sounds like to me, YouTube, the goal is our view time and we're, we're getting lead generation. We're getting the attention on those full clips. When you're taking content across to Facebook, to Instagram, to any of these other platforms, what is your goal there? Just awareness. So you're in people's face all the time or what's your main objective when you're heading across there? Yeah, we still want to have that watch time because especially when you can retarget people with your ads, you want to see that they're engaged, that they've watched 25, 50% of your video. So then you can retarget and know who the really engaged customers are or potential customers are when you're retargeting. So yeah, you still want that watch time across all platforms. Awesome. And have you seen one, like, oh, and obviously it's, they're all good to get, but when, if you're in the world of the pay to play side, so obviously YouTube is really heavy on the organic, right? So it's like, you've, you've got to get the right search terms and all that sort of stuff and you've got to get that lined up. What are you finding is the best if you were in the pay to play? So if you're like pushing paid ads towards video content, which platform is kind of your, would be your preference at the moment? For pay to play, still Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of people like I think have been kind of touting that Facebook's kind of like dying or the engagement's dropping and stuff like that. But I know for us, like even on um, on a video podcast like this, I can get people to watch. And well, again, the stats could be wrong, but it says 100%. I can get people to do 100% views on our like a yeah. 20, 30 minute podcast for a dollar. That's amazing. And especially because like, podcast people want to listen to the whole thing. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And it's, and it's in comparison to anything else, I think it's still a, a huge opportunity out there. And again, I'll say like our, the, on, uh, I haven't checked because we've got a completely different YouTube channel for this podcast as well. And I haven't really checked the stats over there, but I know that on, on Facebook, it's still easy for, for us to kind of do that. So my next question is then if, if people are hearing all this and they're like, okay, now I'm knowing that there's still opportunity out there for me. I can go and I can go and do it. Are there any industries where or any kind of businesses where when, if they're looking at doing, especially starting maybe towards YouTube, where it's like the, the volume is really not kind of there or, or what, what level do you go? It's probably not worth it. If you're looking at search volumes and you're looking at like the number of videos and content and whatnot, is there anyone where you'd be like, look, just, just based on this, like it's probably not a good idea for you. Like do content on video content on all other platforms, but you're probably not going to get a huge reach on YouTube or anyone where you're just like, mm, it's not most ideal. That's a really, that's a really good question. And I can't think of one because here's the thing is it, it takes the creativity of how you're titling and using SEO on things. So mm. let's go like both, both angles here. Let's say if something is too competitive. So I have a client, Christy Code Red, who she's in weight loss. Weight loss, very saturated niche. And also there's a lot of rules around paid advertising. So it's complicated to run paid ads. So Christy wanted to do a video about like how to lose belly fat, because that's a very common topic. But when we look at the numbers, it has a really high search volume and also a really high competition. And Christy isn't a big fish, like as big as like maybe Dr. Oz and you know, the big names that you can think of with her channel. So we looked at the, at how we could retitle that and we titled it how to flatten your belly, which still had a very, a good search volume and not as much competition. And she'll rank there because of how we titled it. So same thing for small search volume. Let's say if it's like a local plumbing company, yeah, it's going to have a smaller search volume compared to something that could go worldwide because as someone in, 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 Toronto or whatever. I don't want to be advertising my plumbing services to the entire world, but you can still go for that smaller search volume and know that you're going to rank there. Like I had a video that was like how to, how to caption your Facebook post, something like that. And it had a fairly small search volume every month, but over the years, because it's ranking at that top spot, it's, it has thousands of views and also opt-ins because of just how it's sitting at the top spot when people are searching for it. Mm, that's awesome. I love that. Now I'm just going to quickly throw a, shel a selfish one in there because uh, I'd love to know without obviously looking into, into the search volumes and stuff like that, being that I'm a guy who's in online advertising, which is obviously a pretty heavily competitive space yes. there. And like our specialty really is like paid Facebook, paid Instagram. 
what should I look for if I want to find and just and continually put and I'm obviously I'm continually putting stuff out there but sometimes I'm I just get bored and I'm like man I feel like I've said the same thing 150 different ways and I feel like I still still don't get that breakthrough what would your recommendation be for someone it's like cool if you're like you are in that heavily competitive space and sometimes it's not as simple as maybe the flatten your stomach versus the lose belly fat type right. situation what, what like how would you how would you uh, go about approaching that? I know this is a, maybe digging in a little bit to your secret sauce here, but I figure I'll just chuck it out there and see what you say. Yeah, I'm well because I'm in that niche too, like even video marketing and and sharing your message and stuff. So it's just it's in the way that you title that you have to be creative and and also in your title to have also that engaging hook. So whether it's like in 2020 or fast or secrets revealed. So the first the beginning of the title we want to have it with that SEO. And then the last part of the video, the video title to have something that is going to draw them in. Even with vlogs, like I, I have been vlogging uh, when I spoke at Funnel Hacking Live, like the behind the scenes of what, what I did. And I titled them instead of just being like Funnel Hacking Live day one, day two, it was what I talked about in the video. So it was like sharing vulnerably from stage or what I can't remember exactly how we worded it, but something like that, that we looked up this, the search volume for things that could still find that video and funnel hacking live of course we did put in the title because that has a good amount of search volume and yeah. for our community has a, a fairly reasonable competition level mm. okay that's awesome so even when you're doing a vlog it's not just like the uh, the life of marley uh, episode right. one it's you're People actually searching for that yeah cool um, yeah. i love that i love that and so with that for anyone else that's going okay she's saying that i should be like looking at the search volumes and stuff how does someone go about actually looking at what the search volumes are? Do Are they just YouTubing and typing in the search? What comes up? And I know there's a, a ton of different tools, but what's your kind of go-to method for, for analyzing those search results? Yeah, we use just like going right into the YouTube platform and searching right there, but we use tools. There's keywords everywhere. That's going to be the one that you'll use to find the search volume. So when you search something, right after you search for it, you'll see this little like text right under the search bar that shows you how much how often it's searched per month. And then we also use TubeBuddy, T-U-B-E, Buddy, Tube, as in like YouTube, to see the competition, the search pool, and just the optimization strength to see, is this a good video for me to try to rank for? Awesome. And then, so what's what's too much competition? If you saw it, you're like, look, don't even go there unless you're like a crazy influencer. Like what would be, where, where would you be like, mm, that's probably too much? Yeah, I love how you pointed that out, unless you're a crazy influencer. <laughs> um, it's It also, it depends on your authority on the platform too. So if you're brand new, I would go for videos that have a lower search pool. So like less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. You can go a little bit more, especially if it has a like a good search volume. And, and if you, if TubeBuddy tells you that the search, op the optimization strength is like fair or better. But yeah, for a new channel, you want to get that search pool of like less than a hundred thousand. Awesome. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot of tangible takeaways that people have got there. And yeah. uh, I appreciate you kind of sharing some of those things. And I want to get delve into a little more, a little more um, humble bragging on your side of things, because you work with some pretty cool people. What's the coolest person that you've worked with so far and that you've been able to get? And then what's the, some, some of the results that you've been able to spin up with all the different strategies that you use? Well, the coolest one, if I can name drop here, we flew out to New York and spent a day with Damon John's team from Shark Tank. Yeah. That was exciting. I've worked with Steven Larson, uh, Alex Sharfin, Christy Code Red. Christy is, she's been with me. We've done four seasons or we're doing her fourth season right away of her YouTube content. And she is someone that like, we just, she's so amazing because you tell her what to do. She just does it. Like she's very committed as an entrepreneur and her channel has grown to the place where now she gets over 10,000 unique viewers on her channel every single month. Like imagine f having 10,000 new people find you every single month. Like what would you pay for that? And, and it's all organic. Like once she makes a video, it's an, it's an asset. It's like real estate on the internet. And then because of that, people are opting into her channel or sorry, her challenge, her 10 pound takedown challenge every that happens every single month. So that's, that's generating so much growth for her business. And then from that, they go up her value ladder. And yeah, like clients that they made videos years ago that are still ranking in the top spots, even though they made it once and then just, it's like the video works for them. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And just so that when people, when they hear that and they're like, okay, cool, people are watching and then they're getting subscribers. Is that because in the description underneath, you're like, here's how you can 
go to my free thing? Is that normally yes. the strategy that you use? Yeah. And so we're saying that in the video too, like click the link below for my free thing. We want to insert that into the script. So we're telling them where to go. If you just have the links, they might not go for them because they just came to get the information. And then like, there's so many other distractions of here's the next video. So you want to say that in the video and have a compelling hook and reason why. So Christy in her videos is saying like, click link below. I've helped hunt thousands of people lose weight and keep it off without shakes, diet pills, exercise, like click the link. So that's like, oh, heck yes, I want to do that because this amazing woman with a blue mohawk told me to do it. <laughs> I love that. And on the other side of that, so you've had all these really cool people who a lot of people may know the names of. What's someone where they came to you and then they're just like, look, I'm a complete beginner in this space. I've got no authority or leverage. And and, and what's some like a, uh, a win that you've helped them get there as well? Yeah, so we have a 21 day challenge where people can join and whether they're just starting or they they have a channel and they wanna be able to grow it. We've had people who came in brand new. There was this one guy, he he's a school teacher, math teacher, still in his nine to five. And in the 21 days, got a thousand subscribers on his channel, had people opting in, got actual sales on from his lead magnet and to the tripwire. So within 21 days, like you can get results. That's insane, what was his product or service? He teaches people how to how to make side income through online courses. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. insane. I was like, look, I'm kind of jealous. I'm stuck at like 568 subscribers over here. And that's, uh, yeah. and I've been, I've been working hard. I need to do the 21 day challenge, obviously. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And another <laughs> benefit of the 21 day challenge is we all support each other's challenge. So or everyone's cha channel, challenge and channel are hard to say back to back. <laughs> And so people subscribe to each other's channels and give each other feedback. And even just that, that swap of other impactful entrepreneurs is, is really helpful for growing the channel. Awesome. And this was not a planned segue at all for anyone listening. So I, this just kind of came up, but so if people want to go and check out the 21 day challenge, cause it does sound pretty epic. I literally sound like I'll chuck one of my team members in there. How do they find out more about the 21 day challenge? Yeah. It's infinite impact challenge.com infiniteimpactchallenge.com. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes. And so in a moment, I'll ask you for all the links where people can find you, where you hang out. Obviously, we know you're on YouTube, but I love to always ask this question. And I got it. It got asked to me many years ago when I was on a podcast and I loved it and I've taken it. And I think it was from one of my buddies, AJ Mirzad. I can't remember. I try and give credit if I know where I came from, but I, I forget. So the question is, what's one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Ooh, that's such a good question. <laughs> I like the question you asked before we even started. Like, what should we not talk about? <laughs> or like coronavirus. It's too big of a hype right now. One question you should ask me, I guess uh, I actually just posted this ridiculous video. It's like, what's the secret to your success? And I do this funny thing that my audience who follows me closely enough recognizes this. So I like to put little Easter eggs in my videos, just mm. little like nuggets that if you've been following me for long enough, you'll notice it. So the secret to my success, <laughs> peanut butter and jam sandwiches, because I, <laughs> every time I'm traveling, it's just, that's what's easy. And also mariachis. So I have this little funny thing where I hide little mariachis in my videos, in my slides, actually at friends' houses. I have this ridiculous mariachi statue. And sometimes I bring it with me when I travel and I'll hide it in people's houses for them to find eventually later. And then I tell them they just got mariachied and it's become a thing. I actually have a little mariachi statue right behind me on my... So I, another oh thing for you to do for your audience is hide little, little hints and surprises in your videos and the people who are big enough followers and, and fans, raving fans of your, of your movement, they'll notice it and they'll appreciate it and they'll look for it in your videos. I love that. I haven't done it on purpose, but I have like, you know, those little, I think they're like the pop, pop vinyl characters. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I, I love, like, I've got a couple of different ones of them. I've, I've got like a little Muhammad Ali one and a bunch of different ones. So oh, there, was, cool. there was one video I was doing for a YouTube video. I thought it would just be fun, but like every kind of sec, like section of the video, if you were kind of in three parts, I would just move it over a little bit. And then mm -hmm. like just slowly like made its way all the way across the desk. And I thought it was just a little bit, like, I didn't do it because I knew it was an Easter egg. I thought, oh, that's it just, so funny. I thought it would just be hilarious to watch later on in the edit. But um, yeah, so I, I love that you do that for people. That's amazing. So for, uh, for anyone that's listening to and it's gone obviously you've given them a ton of value which is amazing and, and thank you for that and a, a ton of takeaways what's the best place for people to connect with you number one obviously if they want to see kind of some of the behind the scenes amazing stuff that you're doing but if they also want to um to follow and connect with some of your content obviously we've got your challenge but where's the best place for people to connect with you 
my YouTube and my Instagram. So on YouTube, we're putting out weekly and we're moving it to more frequent content as well. So youtube.com slash Marley Jacks. And then on my Instagram, uh, if you want to connect with me, that's where I respond to all my messages personally. That's where you can get me for sure. And on my Instagram, I try to be a stand-up comedian on my Instagram stories. I, I, people, they're either laughing with me or at me. So you can also join me there, instagram.com slash Marley Jacks. Awesome, amazing. We'll put all of those in the show notes as well. So guys, if you've enjoyed anything from Miley today, please go connect with her, check it out. I know I'm going to send over my team and tell them to check out her challenge. So uh, it's, it's going to be amazing. And again, thank you so much for making the time today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.